Hello my friends, welcome to another exciting episode in our Photoshop design series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create the social media flyer inside of Photoshop. As a beginner, it is something that you'll be able to learn with the steps I'll be taking you through, right? So if you've not gotten your Smart Design and Premium asset, now is the best time to get yours. So you can get all these assets, the PNG files, the text, the 3D files, and other flyer templates, close to 100 flyer templates from inside of this bundle that you can use in your daily designs, the backgrounds, and even the light effects that I use in my designs, right? So why not get yours? And if you've not subscribed to my channel, now is the best time to hit the subscribe button. So you won't miss anything I'll be posting after this time around. Without having to say much, let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is click on file and click on new like this. Right, so I'm going to be using the social media um, flyer size that I've always used in previous videos. If you've not watched my social media flyer videos, make sure you click on it. It's directly up here so you can um, watch. So resolution 300 and everything stays the same like this, right? So the first thing I want to do is make sure your foreground color is set to this black and um, solid color and um, click OK. So you can then revert and um, click on this and click a lighter color, which I would like to use this and um, click um, new layer, select your brush. And what you should do is make it slightly bigger and um, click twice. Right, so you have a blend of from black to a light grayish kind of color like this, more like a gradient background. The next thing you want to do is go and select your ellipse tool like this, draw like this. Make sure it's not too big, somewhere around here. Now uh, revert this, double click on the thumbnail like this and use the eyedropper tool to select this color here. And uh, when you're done, you can move it upward like this move it upward and another thing you can do I think is um, create a new layer with your brush selected make it smaller just so it's within the ellipse itself then click once change the blend mode to linear dodge art and um, ctrl T to resize it bring it inside like this and um, move it in place, make sure it's in the middle and click enter when you're done, right? So the next thing I want to do is I'm going over to my resource file. I'm just going to bring in the image of this child smiling with the headset on. And um, what I want to do is move it closer like this. And um, yeah, I think somewhere around here is good, right? Click enter when you're done. A couple of things I want to do. The first one, hold down control while you're selecting the image, click on mask and um, go over the mask is still selected. Go to filter, go to order and go to minimum. I've done this so many times in our previous video, just to remove the fringes on the ed edge of the image itself. Convert this to a smart object like this and um, Click on the mask again to mask it. This time we'll be getting rid of the edges. Go over to your brush, select your brush and um, revert it. Make sure it's set to black and um, clean off the edges like this. Make sure you're um, precise with this and make sure it's looking nice. Right. So when you do this, the next thing you want to do is go over to filter. Let's go and make this image pop. Now, what I'm going to do is camera raw filter, select it and um, use my settings that I used here. So it's just going to be highlights, shadows and um, you can add texture to yours, right? But I didn't add it to mine. So you can choose to add it to yours, but this is just the three things I touched here, right? So um, moving on, um, I would want to convert this image to a black and white, not the entire image, part of this image. So one thing I like to do is I would go over to um, 
Okay, so I want to convert this image. So the face is going to be the one that has the black and white and the headsets while the cloth is going to return the color. So how do I do this? Right? Very simple. I've done something like this in a previous video. But I'll do it again. Go to adjustment layer, click on black and white like this. And what you should do is click on it and click on create clipping mask. Make sure it's directly on top of it. You can adjust the settings here. I'll just adjust the red levels and um, also take down the blues a bit. But basically the red is what you need to adjust well. So leaving it at this point, you can see that my image has enough contrast. I can leave my yellow the way it is. It's fine. You can use my settings. It's fine like this. And um, so you can see that the black and white is affecting the entire image. That's not what I want. So I'm going to click here to invert this. Control I to invert this, right? Control I to invert this. And when you do that, go over to your brush, select your brush and make sure your foreground color is set to white and reveal the black and white areas, which are these areas here. I'm not going to touch the clots. The hand here and the other hand here should be black and white. Right? Okay, so good. Now, another thing I want to do is I'd want to change the color of the shirt is wearing to yellow so you can match the composition of this um, design itself. So what I want to do is go over to adjustment again and click on hue and saturation. Clip it so it doesn't affect the whole composition. And I'm just going to move my hue slider. Um, before I do that, click on this and select the red, right? And now you cannot move the hue slider. You can see it's only affecting the clothes itself, right? So you can see easy peasy, I have changed the color of the shirts to a yellow color that matches what I have in the background. So you can easily come here and play with the saturation, play with the lightness and um, of course to fit what you want to achieve, right? So with this, I'm just going to leave mine this way. Reduce the saturation a bit or increase. I'm just going to leave it in between here like this and uh, I'm done. The next one, I'm going to adjustment layer. This time I'm clicking on um, create a new layer. Go to adjustment layer, solid color. And um, yes, this is the color I'm using, the foreground color. Um, clip it, change the blend mode to linear light like this. Ctrl I to invert this and go over to your brush and paint in the areas you want light to hit, right? Which is these areas. Doesn't need to be too much like this, like this. And um, you can zoom in and reduce the, the brush size so that you can um, avoid mistakes like this. So you can go in, you can see what I'm, what I'm saying now. So let me zoom in and correct that mistake. So I'm going to reduce the size of my brush and um, painting the light here and also on this part too, painting the light here just this way. Just make sure in anything you're doing, you're aiming for perfection, right? So I'm just doing this, make sure yours is a little bit smoother than mine. So I'm just going to reduce it like this and um, reduce it, make sure it's not too much. You don't want the lighting to be too much right make sure it's always minimal you can play with a light effect and um, see what works best for you um, yes so i have this um, i'm just going to click on all of this select this hold down shift click ctrl g to group them like this and um, you can move them upward i'm just going into my type text and I'm just going to bring this. The font I use for this type text is Stretch Pro. You can get that inside your the um, Smart Designer Premium Assets. So get that and install your fonts. And um, all other freebies, you have different PNG images inside and every other thing. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And um, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you will not miss any of the videos I'll be dropping anytime from now. I'll see you in the next video just up ahead like this.